So this question says an um, eight kilogram mass. Let me just to doodle for a bit. When I read the physics problem questions, I like to doodle, uh, kind of draw a picture of what's going on to make sure I got all that. So it's describing a mass that's hanging from a spring. Okay, I got it from a spring. Uh, from something that is a, a, I'm given the spring constant. Okay, it says find the position of the end of the spring away from its rest position. Ah. So what I have to imagine is comparing this to this hypothetical situation where I have a spring hanging with a, nothing on it. And if you look at the position of this uh, unladen spring and compare it with the position of the laden or loaded string, spring, then there will be some displacement delta x. So that's uh, uh, what I have to do. And I think I want you to do this question as an example of drawing free body diagram in a relatively si simple situation. So what I've drawn here, this is not a free body diagram. This is just a doodle. I'm just trying to make sure uh, by <laughs> representing situation visually that I understood what the physical setup is. Once I have that sense of understanding that I'm in the right place to draw what we call free body diagram or a force diagram, they kind of mean the same thing. Um, so in a free body diagram, we our goal is to draw all the forces on an object that we are interested in and only the forces that are on the object that we are interested in. So, um, so I try to keep free body diagrams as simple. Really the main star of the free body diagram are the forces. So anything else, I'll try to draw them as simply as possible. So this mass, um, to the extent I can, I'm going to try to represent it with a dot, with a point. And here I can. Uh, later in the semester, we'll come to a place where we can't. We need to draw the extended body to be able to handle torque and all that. Until then, a dot will work fine, so I'll do that. So once you have that representation of object, and by the way, if you have more than one object, then you have to draw a separate free body diagram for each. Here we have only one object, so we'll just go with that one. Um, I have to think of the forces on the object. and. Uh, I find that the kind of the starting place is often the hardest because once you draw your first force, then um, that force will also remind you of other forces that should be there. Um, so, so as I'm struggling to think about the first force to draw, the thing that helps me most is just drawing the gravity. Uh, all the almost all the situations we are dealing with, there's gravity. We are near the surface of Earth. So there's going to be gravitational force. So I'm just going to start with the force of gravity. There's always gravity. Then once I have I have that, then I ask myself this question: Did I draw all the forces? And by which I mean, um, when you look at your net forces, all the forces that you have drawn, you'll get a sense of what kind of acceleration that uh, net force represents. And the sense of acceleration you get from net force, it should match the sense of acceleration that you already had from your understanding of setup. Now, uh, if you were doodling uh, as you're reading the question, then I hope you had a sense that the acceleration of mass was zero. It was just hanging, it wasn't doing anything else, it just resting at that hanging position. So if I'm getting downward acceleration, uh, <laughs> that can't be right. So there must be some additional forces other than gravity. And I hope as you think through that, that you remember, oh, yeah, there should be spring force from this spring that's attached. So there should be spring force here. And I think uh, once you get this far, that you have two forces on this object, that the acceleration should be zero and up before <laughs> moving on to the next step. Ask yourself the question, did I draw all the forces? And here the answer should be yes. You have two forces, down and up. You should be able to add them in a way that they add up to zero. So all that's fine. I don't see anything else touching this block, so I don't go I, I, I don't go too far looking for additional forces to draw since it looks like I have everything. 
So once you have that and you have acceleration is zero, which means your net force is equal to zero. So you should have this intuitive sense that your spring force is going to be equal to this gravitational force. Um, if you do great. Uh, this week we'll cover more of the proper standard strategy uh, steps where you are trying to deal with the more complicated situations where you can't just set two forces equal to each other. Now, having said that spring force is equal to mg, that doesn't actually answer the question because the question is asking you for this displacement here and that's nowhere in our expressions. So this is where you have to think of another way to express a spring force. And you are taught that in the chapter under something called the Hooke's Law. And what Hooke's Law said was, uh, let me deal with the absolute value so that I don't have to worry about signs. The, the magnitude of spring force is proportional to displacement. Uh, let me use their symbol delta y, and there's a constant of proportionality, which is this spring constant here. So, so that's the equation you should end up with, that um, this expression that comes from Hooke's law, spring constant times delta y is equal to this value of force for this specific situation that you found that spring force is equal to mg. Uh, so you have one equation, and let's count our unknowns. Hopefully only one. This is the only unknown. I think I'm given every other value. Let's see here, g is just 9.8 meter per second squared as usual. Um, so I, I can solve this for my displacement. And I'm just gonna do the algebra in my head, mg over k, and just plug in the numbers. Uh, let me do that on a calculator. Uh, mass, 8 kilograms, times uh, g, 9.8, divided by spring constant, 538 newton per meter. And uh, I do encourage you to do the dimensional analysis, plug in the units, kilogram, meters per second squared, divided by newton per meter, and uh, all the units should work out to give you meter. Um, so when I say p equal sign here, this is the displacement in meters. Um, so 0 0.146 meter, 0 0.146 meter. And now the, uh, do watch always what unit the question wants the numerical answer in. Looks like they want that in centimeters. So I need, do need to convert this to centimeters. That will be doing that in my head, 14.6 uh, centimeters. If you need help with the unit conversion, let me know. I do have some examples of unit conversion from beginning of the semester, but I'm happy to give you more examples. So that's the answer here. It's a relatively simple question. Uh, and uh, so the more complicated the scenarios in which, what did I miss? A kilogram. Um, oh, position, yeah. They probably want a minus sign. <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes, you know, questions are quite clear on if they want to sign the quantity or not. Um, if you give an unsigned quantity and they don't like it, then, you know, try to sign the quantity. It's a question of if the, um, if, uh, the sign is meaningful, if we are using that to indicate direction. So uh, if we aren't, like if the question is asking for magnitude, distance, or other words that indicate, uh, or absolute value, or something that tells you, oh, they are only looking for the size, not the direction, then then sure, use the unsigned or positive quantity. Um, position is a vector quantity, so yeah, I should have caught on that hint, but th this is one of the reasons you have infinite number of tries. You can just <laughs> try the unsigned quantity and see if they say it's wrong, um, look, read it more carefully to find out. Oh, yeah, they actually want me to use positive or negative. So I put a negative here um, because it's downward, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I got other things I need to care about. Uh, I have some issues because they never define the axis. They never defined the upward as positive. Um, anyway, so, um, so yeah, this is a relatively simple question. Uh, there are more 
uh, fourth problem solving questions this week and actually next week. And uh, uh, they'll be more involved. We have uh, something that we call standard strategy that uh, uh, set of uh, systematic steps that I hope uh, once you master it, it'll help you um, help you tackle any force questions, even the really complicated ones.